way. Morning. Uh, I've just popped in for some coffee. I've run out. Well, oh, you know where to find it. Yep. You'll have to excuse me carrying on. I'm all behind this morning. No, that's fine. Did you know she was going to just take off like that? Um, Only I wish you'd said something to me. A scribbled note, that's all I got. Yeah, I know. There it was, sitting in the cash book when I came in yesterday. You can imagine how I felt. I'm sorry. It would have been nice to have had an explanation. I know. I can only apologise. So why didn't you say something? I didn't know she was going either. Not until she came out with her rucksack all packed. Oh, come on. You must have had some idea. No, honestly, Susan. She just announced she was off and that was it. Did you have an argument or something? No. Not really. Well, anyway, it is nothing to do with me. I, I just wish she'd had the consideration to give me a bit more notice, that's all. Hi, Dad. Pip, I need to talk to you. I've just had Izzy on the phone. What do you mean? Why didn't you pass her over? She told me about Jude. What about him? I asked her and she told me. He's 28 years old. So? Pip, you're 16! Why did you ask her anyway? You had no right to go interrogating my friend! I did not interrogate her. I asked her how old Jude was, that's all. And now you know? Yes, I do! So that's that. You lied to us, Pip. That's what really upsets me. Because I knew you'd give me a hard time, that's why. Which is exactly what you're doing. So well done, Dad. Predictable as ever. Listen to me. You are such a hypocrite. What? You're loads older than Mum and that's fine. That is totally different. Oh yeah, of course it is. We are eight years apart, that's all. And your Mum was a lot older than 16 when we got together. I'm nearly 17. <sighs> He is not right for you, Pip. Oh, how can you say that? You haven't even met him. I don't need to. So the only thing that matters to you is that he's older than me? Well, that's quite enough as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't matter how intelligent he is. It doesn't matter that we have the same sense of humour or that we like the same things. Oh, do you? Yes, we do, actually. Music, for one. Pip. Men of his age have a different... Outlook on life from someone your age. Oh, do they? Well, this might come as a surprise to you, Dad, but he really likes me. Of course it doesn't surprise me. Well, that's what it sounds like. Look, Pip, I worry about you. We both do. We don't want you to get hurt, that's all. No one is going to get hurt. And anyway, it's up to me, so can you please stop trying to control my life? Pip, I'm What's not... What's going on? You better ask him. Pip. Pip! Is this about Jude? Yes, I'm afraid it is. It's a lot worse than we thought. Hi, love. How are you getting on? Oh, I'm getting there. Turn the sign round to open, can you? Oh, yeah, sure. You finished the pigs already? No, there's plenty more to do. I thought I'd just think you needed a hand. Oh, that's very sweet. Do you want me to carry on marking up? No, I'm just about finished, to be honest. Oh. Hey, have you heard any more about why Annette went off like that? Well, I had a word with Ellen earlier on. And? Well, according to her, she was as surprised as we were. Apparently she just packed her rucksack and announced she was off to her grandma's, just like that. Yeah, but there must have been some reason, though. Mm. You don't just walk out on your job and everything. I wondered if they'd had some sort of bust-up, you know, her and Ellen. Did you ask her? Oh, yeah. She said they were fine. Hmm. Well, anyway, it's dropped you in it, good and proper. Oh, well, no. <laughs> Bang goes your Sunday off for a start. Plus, there's all her other shifts. Well, I've been thinking about that, Neil. Mm. Maybe it won't turn out to be such a bad thing after all. Why? Who's going to do them? Me. Oh, no. Well, oh, uh, Susan, come no. on. You've got enough on your plate as it Look, is. I have at the moment, but how long's that going to last, eh? Mm. 
Whatever happens, there's going to be fewer hours than I've got at the moment, fewer or nothing. Oh, yes, that's true. If I take these hours back for now, maybe it'll be for the best. I mean, might as well make the money while I can. <sighs> I'm really not happy about you taking on more hours. But I don't see we've got much choice. We need the money. We'll manage somehow. No, no, the more I think about it, the more I reckon Annette might have done us a favour going off like that. You can see why I'm upset. He's nearly 30, for God's sake. And Izzy was sure about that. Yeah, she came up with it straight away. She thought it wasn't an issue. She's probably impressed. Yeah, it's obviously something they've discussed. I bet they have. I knew something like this would happen as soon as she started plastering on the makeup and wearing those skimpy little tops. They all wear that sort of thing these days. Not all of them. And anyway, it's our pit we're talking about. <sighs> We should have been firmer with her. We should have clamped down from the start. I don't know what good that would have done. OK, so there might have been a few rounds. A few? But at least we'd have been protecting her from... from predators like this. David. No, I'm sorry, love, but that is what he is, and we both know it. No, we don't. Oh, come on. Look, I'm as worried as you are. <sighs> I don't like it at all, but we've got to handle this carefully. So what are you saying? We pretend that we're happy about it? No, of course not. But we've got to trust her. She's a pretty sensible girl. Uh, no! I used to think so, but if she's going out with blokes like that, it's just naive, Ruth. I suppose... Well, in a way, she's got to be free to make her own mistakes. What? You mean sleep with the guy? They might not have gone as far as that. A bloke that age... That is where he'll want this to go. David. And if there is any damn thing I can do to stop it, I will. Of course you feel like that. So do I. I'm going out. Where? Just out, OK? Not unless you tell us where you're not. Oh, please. What about your college work? Don't worry, Mum, I'll do it later. Are you seeing him? If you mean Jude, yes, I am. Well, you needn't think I'm going to drive you into Borchester. No one's asking you to. He's picking me up. Oh, is he? We'll see about that. Dad, you are not going to do anything embarrassing. No, he's not. Aren't I? If you're going to be stupid, I'll, I'll go down to the pub and I'll meet him there. You don't have to do that. It'll be fine. Better be. You going to be in for lunch? Don't worry, we'll get something out. OK. Excuse me. Got calves to see to. Dad, please don't do anything embarrassing. Oh, don't worry. I've got better things to do. Hi, Mum. Any coffee going? Hello, love. Of course there is. Thanks. You're early this morning? Uh, yeah. Come and sit over here in the warm. OK. Dad's still out milking, but he'll be in for breakfast in a minute. Do you want some? Oh, no, I'm fine, thanks. OK. You're looking tired. Oh, I didn't sleep that well. It'll take some getting used to, I expect. Having the place to yourself. Yeah. Help yourself to coffee. It's there. I saw Susan this morning. She was in doing the papers. And she wasn't happy about it either. Shall I pour you one? Oh, yes, please. I felt like she was blaming me for Annette walking out. I told her I was as surprised as she was, but I still heard myself apologising. Oh, that's ridiculous. It's hardly your fault. I don't know. Maybe it was. How could it have been? Maybe it came over as... I don't know... Judgmental about it all. You've got your own views, and why not? Yeah, well, maybe I put them over too strongly, so she felt uncomfortable. Well, she was bound to be in a state. There you are. Thanks. Well, I knew she was in a state, and all I did was go on and on. It would have been Greg's grandchild, Mum. Oh, Helen. Anyway... I expect she thought she'd let me down. Hadn't come up to my standards, whatever they are. No wonder she didn't want to live with me any longer. Now, listen to me. You couldn't have been kinder to her. Goodness, you were even thinking of taking her away on holiday a week ago. Well, she wasn't interested. You no, know, she was probably thinking it was time to move on, which, which seems to me perfectly natural after what she'd been through. <sighs> yeah, get away from me, you mean. Just ask yourself, how was she able to come to a decision like that? What do you mean? 
Remember what she was like when she first came to Ambridge? Fairly desperate. Exactly. And now look at her. She's made a mature decision to change her life and move on. She's taken over responsibility for herself. Yeah, I suppose she has. And who made that possible? You did. With all the care and support you've given her. You should be feeling very proud of yourself. Should I? Yes, you should. And if you can't quite feel that way, well, I can tell you, I'm very proud of you. Oh, Mum. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, hi, Mum. Yeah, it's fine. Carves, I can understand. I brought you some coffee. Oh, thanks. It's just what I need. You missed out this morning. Is she gone? Yeah, he picked her up about ten minutes ago. They've gone to see some friends of his in Felpersham. Hmm. Did you go out and see him? No, I thought I'd better keep out of the way. Yeah, that's why I stayed out here. We're going to have to be sensible about this, David. I agree. That's why sooner or later I might just have to flatten him. And what would that achieve? It would show him that taking advantage of my daughter doesn't come without a price, and hopefully you'll get the message. And what if it drives the two of them closer together? <sighs> Won't. I wouldn't count on it. Ruth, it's an infatuation, that's all. Plus the kudos of going out with an older guy. You know it's not going to last. All the more reason to handle it carefully. Well, so what do you suggest then? Have him round for tea? Yeah, maybe... All right, well, do me a favour. Make it a day when I'm at the NFU. We don't want blood on our carpet. David, will you please stop being Neanderthal about this? I'm oh, sorry, love. Let's just remember that Pip's going to be 17 next week. She's not a kid anymore. She makes her own choices. Well, and we stand there doing nothing while she makes damn stupid ones. Ruth, it's intolerable. I know. But if you go on pushing for a confrontation, you'll just drive her away. Then she really will be on her own. And neither of us wants that, do we? No. I saw Ruth in the shop this morning. They're very worried about Pip. Yes. She's going out with a much older man. 28, apparently. And obviously, they're not very happy about it. Right. You haven't listened to a word I've been saying, have you? Yes, I have. Young Pip's going out with an old age pension. Oh, Brian. How old did you say he was, this ancient Lothario? 28. Uh, um, Pip's what? It's her birthday next week and she'll be 17. Oh, see why they're worried. And it's really got to David, apparently. He's all for going down to the college and giving his chap a good thumping. Why, is he one of the tutors, then? No, a mature student. Mm. Well, I agree with David. If it had been one of our girls, he'd be missing a couple of teeth by now. Yes, I remember what you were like when Kate got mixed up with those travellers. And it's the way we're made. We favour the direct approach. Mm hmm Which usually makes things a lot worse. So what would you do then, Jenny? Well, send him a questionnaire about his intentions. <laughs> Don't be so silly. Ask him for a couple of references. OK, so it's not easy. But I'm sure Ruth's right. Thumping him won't get them anywhere. Oh, kids, eh? Oh, that time with Kate. Do you remember? As if I could forget. Disappearing like that. Oh, what a nightmare. Mm. So she came through it all right. I know, and I'm proud of her. Anyway, I must go. I don't be late picking Mum up. Are you off to the laurels? Mm -hmm, that's right. She gets so agitated if I'm not there on time. Well, give my love. Yeah, will do. Oh, I might bring her back for lunch, by the way. Fine. I'm not at all sure that she's feeding herself properly. OK, I'll get it. She won't have the same incentive to cook now she's on her own. No, exactly. Morning, Jennifer. Oh, Alan, come in. Thanks. Morning, Brian. Morning, Vicar. How are you? Oh, very well, thanks. Well, uh, well come in, sit yourself down. Oh, uh, thanks. Coffee, it's freshly made. Oh, lovely, thank you. Good man. Alan, will you excuse me? I'm taking Mum over to see Jack this morning. Oh, well, don't let me hold you up. I'm sure Brian can <laughs> deal with my little uh, requests. Oh, sounds ominous. <laughs> I'm off then. Bye. Bye. So, um, what have you got on your mind, Alan? Well, you know how it is when the vicar calls. There's usually a collecting tin not far behind. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that'd cross my mind. You want milk? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. I thought you were... 
might be interested in uh, a Lent project I've got in mind. Oh, yes. Hmm. I'm, uh, I'm planning to camp out. You mean camp as in tent? Yeah, exactly, for 46 nights. What? Well, I'm, I'm going to be going round the parishes. I'll start in Ambridge on the village green, and then after a bit I'll probably move to the churchyard. Right. And after that, who knows? Maybe the memorial garden. What, you're going to live in a tent at this time of year? Well, I'm sleeping in one. I'll be in the vicarage during the day, and I'm hoping the weather's going to be kind. I see. It's, it was partly a personal challenge, but it's also to draw attention to refugees mm. and the homeless. It's a sort of visible reminder. Yeah, I get you. Not that my small discomforts will compare with what refugees actually go through, but uh, it is a gesture. Well, good for you. So, uh, how can we help? I was wondering whether you might be willing to sponsor me. <laughs> it's you that'll be suffering the pain, so why not? Oh, that's great, thank you. There's a refugee charity in Felpersham doing some very good work, and I'm raising money for them. Fine, well, count us in, then. I was hoping um, Adam might be interested, too. He, you know if he's around today? Are you all right, Mum? Yes, thanks, dear. Are you sure? Yes. There we are. Ooh. Do you coat up? It's a jolly cold wind. Oh, look, there's Ted. Good morning. Good morning, Peggy. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And Jennifer, hello. Oh, morning, Ted. How's Violet today? Oh, not too bad, thank you. Good. She seemed quite pleased to see me. It's not always the case, I'm afraid. How long has she been in here? Oh, it's over two years now. There's been a steady deterioration. Oh, dear, I'm so sorry. Yes, it's very sad. Still, I mustn't complain. We've had 59 wonderful years together, Vi and I. Oh, my goodness. That makes Jack and me practically newlyweds. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do for our 60th, I don't know. I'm trying not to think about it too much. No. But as the time gets nearer, I know I shall want to mark the occasion. Of course. She really is an extraordinary woman. I wish you could have met her before... Yes, indeed. Anyway, if you'll excuse me... Of course. Only I'm meeting a very dear friend of mine for lunch. That's why I'm a bit earlier than usual. Oh, well, you mustn't be late. Uh, no. And afterwards we're joining our little group for bridge. <laughs> we're not much good, any of us. But we have some laughs together. <laughs> well, good for you. Anyway, it's nice to see you, Jennifer. And you. And Peggy, I'm sure we'll see each other again before too long. I hope so. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you. I'm sure I shall. Goodbye. Bye, Ted. Bye. Oh, such a nice man. Isn't he? Right. Well, we'd better go in and see how Jack is this morning. Oh, there he is. Oh. Hello, Adam. Oh, hi. Hello, Alan. Good to see you. Morning. Alan was hoping for a quick chat. We're not holding you up, are we? No, no, I'm fine for a bit. What do you think of our polytunnels, Alan? I don't think you've been here before. Oh, not inside, certainly. <laughs> Very impressive. Great environment, isn't it? And did you see the framework for the new area? I did. When does the polythene go up? Well, as soon as we can get some better weather. Early April, hopefully. Oh. The idea is to get a new strawberry crop in during May, am I right, Adam? Mm, that's the plan. Hopefully we'll be selling crop out of it this summer. So, do you think these uh, covered crops are the Protected the way... crops, we call them. Oh, right. You think that they're the way ahead? Yeah, yeah, I do. I know they've had a bad press at times, you know, covering the countryside in plastic and all that. Yeah, we've had a fair bit of stick from the village, as you know. <laughs> you have. But when you add up the environmental benefits, fewer chemical sprays, less imported fruit, in my book, it's a no-brainer. Oh, I see. It all fits in with Adam's ideas on world development. Yeah, I don't suppose Alan wants to hear about that. No, no, really, I'm very interested. Well, I've tried to keep up with the debate. I used to be in development work myself. You were in Africa, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Things have moved on a bit since then. So, tell me, what's the new thinking? Well, it's mainly to do with the type of farming. As you know, in the West, we've gone down the monoculture route. Big areas of a single crop getting a lot of chemical sprays. And very productive it's been, too. Yeah, up to a point, but it hasn't really worked as a model for feeding the world. So where do we go from here? Well, for me, I suppose you could say it's the very opposite. Small-scale farms, a whole range of different crops and livestock, whatever works in the local area. Well, if you ask me, it's turning the clock back. 
But if it feeds people and gets them out of poverty... Yeah, as you might have gathered, Alan, we don't exactly see eye to eye on this. Yeah, Brian's stuck in the 1970s summer. Ugh. Produce as much as you can, never mind what it does to the planet. Come on, come on, that's a bit extreme. Yeah, only a bit. So, uh, how does all this fit in with the way you farm here, in Adam? As far as I can, I'd like to get away from the monoculture idea. That's why we're still in sheep and venison. Plus, we're expanding the soft fruit. Oh, I see. OK, we still have to work within the system, which means a lot of wheat and oilseed rape. Don't suppose you thought you'd have a debate on world agriculture, Alan? <laughs> no, but I'm very glad I did. Well, you did ask. No, absolutely. So, what was it you wanted to talk about? Refugees, mostly. Oh, right. Yeah, but, but it's all connected, you see. I mean, what's one of the major reasons for people becoming refugees? Hmm? Hunger. Absolutely. So if we get our farming right, maybe I won't have to keep inventing silly ideas for Lent. It's a shame he was so tired. He couldn't seem to stay awake. No. I think he was pleased to see us, though. Oh, I'm sure he was. He seemed so full of beans for the first ten minutes. Then he ran out of steam. I know. Oh, it's a shame. Oh, aren't you going to turn left here? Oh, I thought you were coming back for lunch with us. Oh, I don't think so, dear. Thank you all the same. Oh, well, if you're sure. Quite sure, thank you. OK, all right. So, what are you going to do this afternoon? Oh, I'll be fine. I've got my crossword. Oh, I do wish you'd go out a bit more. You spend an awful lot of time on your own. Oh, it's not the way I choose, I can assure you. Oh, I know, Mum. I miss him terribly. Of course you do. It's such an odd situation. I still feel we're together, but at the same time, he's not there. I'm without him, but still with him. Yes. Sometimes at night I find myself talking to him in the way I used to. I suppose that shows I haven't really accepted it. What did you think of Ted and his bridge club? Oh, I couldn't do anything like that. Not at the moment. I need to keep myself free for Jack. Not all the time, surely. In the daytime, at any rate. I wouldn't want to be committed to anything regular. Well, I got the impression from Ted that it helps in his relationship with his wife. I don't remember him saying that exactly. Well, not in so many words. But he was very positive about his life outside the laurels. Well, whether he was or not, I shan't be joining any bridge clubs, I can tell you that. Well, I must say, I admire your spirit, Alan, camping out at this time of the year. <laughs> Usha thinks I'm slightly unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> I can see her point. I'm not sure about a religion that likes its followers to suffer. Well, I'm waiting for one that advocates five-star hotels on every conceivable occasion. <laughs> well, we are a broad church. Maybe not as broad as that, though. <laughs> anyway, we'll be very happy to sponsor you, won't we, Brian? Absolutely. It's a very fine cause. Well, thank you. And I'll get Ian to put the word around Grey Gables, too. I'm sure he can rustle up a few more sponsors. I'll bring it up at the next BL board meeting, too, because it won't hurt them to put their hands in their pockets. Well, that's fantastic. You're both very kind. Oh, here's Jenny's back. Oh, goodness, have I been here all this time? I'm so sorry. I'm keeping you from your work. No, no, it's been interesting. Well, certainly has for me. Well, watch this space. There's going to be some big changes in farming, no doubt about that. Hey, my goodness. Are you all still gossiping? Afraid so, and it's all my fault. As long as you've put the world to rights. Yeah, we've done that already. <laughs> I'll say cheerio, then. Yeah, bye, Alan. Yeah, see you, bye. Alan. Bye. bye. So, how was Jack? Oh, tired, I'm afraid. So he slept most of the time. We didn't stay very long. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. He seemed happy enough when he was awake. But I'm more worried about Mum, to be honest. Why? What's the problem? Oh, she seems to be in some sort of limbo. She's living as if Jack's going to come walking in through the back door any second. Ah, yes. It's a horrible situation. But if she had a few more things in her life, if she'd just go out a bit more... So what do we do? Well, I thought while I was driving home, why don't I ask Jill and Chris to take her out for the day? Oh, that's an idea. Well, did you have anywhere in mind? No, no, not yet. But they're the same generation, those three, and uh, they've got a lot of shared history... And they all get on so well. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Absolutely. Well, talk to Jill about it. Well, she'll be all for it, I'm sure. And a day out with those two might help Mum get a new perspective on things. It's worth a try, anyway.
There you are. What do you think of that? Is it Jude's work? Yeah. So what do you think? Well, it's... Oh, I think it's fantastic. Look at the way the clouds move. Yeah, it's good. Does he get paid for this sort of thing? I've no idea. To be honest, he's not that interested in money. He's not? He's got one of those minds, you know, always looking for something fresh and exciting. Should see some of the stuff in his house. His parents' house? No, he's got his own place. Bentham oh. Road. Do, do you know it? Yeah, I think so. It's a Victorian terrace. His parents bought it for him. Did they? He lets out two of the rooms to students, so it's like funding him through college. Lucky him. It's not really about the money. It's design. That's what really gets him going. And music. And he's doing this website design course at college? Yep. Started in September. Oh. He's done all sorts of stuff, though. Travelled. Done lots of arty things. Great. Well, we'd really like to meet him. How about bringing him over for a meal one night? <laughs> I don't think so. Not what Dad's doing is Darth Vader impression. He's got over that now. Oh, I hope so. Sometimes parents have trouble keeping up. They need a bit of catch-up time. That's their problem. Your dad still sees you as his little girl. Oh, please. So you need to be a bit more patient with him. Only if he's prepared to be reasonable. He will be. Yeah, well, we'll see. All right. Hello. Oh, Pip, the very person. And what is it now? I've got to move a bunch of ewes into a new pen. You wouldn't care to give me a hand, would you? I might. Only if you've got time. Yeah, yeah, go on then. Oh, great. Thanks, Pip. Just give me two minutes to change into my old jeans. Yeah, OK. I'll see you in the landing shed. OK. Thanks. Do appreciate it. There you are. I'm prepared to give him a chance. Don't look too bad. Goes all right, does it? Like a whippet. Do you want to see the space in the back? There. What do you think of that? Oh, you get a couple of pigs in there, I suppose. A couple of pigs? It would take half a dozen bullocks, no trouble at all. <laughs> so, what do you reckon? Good boy or what? Yeah, don't look bad at all. When are you getting it painted? Ah, uh, that's a sore point. Well, you've got to have your name up there. E. Grundy. Eddie Grundy. Well, whatever. How about... Eddie Grundy Logistics. Sounds more like summit in arithmetic. The problem is, it'll cost a bit to get the old lot painted, including the ferret. Well, you're having a ferret up there? If I can run to it. Quick as a ferret. Got a ring to it, innit? <laughs> I know a bloke who'll do it for you. Noddy Cartwright lives over Ollerton. Uh, do a good job, would he? Yeah, he'd do a lovely job, and it wouldn't cost an arm and a leg. Mm, sounds worth a go. You scribble down what you want, and I'll get him to give you a price. He might give me a discount, I shouldn't wonder. You're on. Anyway, we've got to go. I'm supposed to be taking Frida to the supermarket. Uh, when shall I give you the details? Uh, come in the ball dinner time. I'll give Noddy a ring this afternoon. Right, cheers. So what do you reckon, Bert? Not a bad motor eddy sport, eh? Yeah, looks all right. Uh, all I've got to do now is find enough work to pay for it. Anyway, I'm off. Yeah, me too. Got sheep to move. Uh, David, have you got a minute? Yeah, sure. See you dinner time then, Eddie. Yeah, see you, Bert. So what's the problem, Eddie? Is it the cows? No, no, they're fine. I was just wondering, uh, you know we were talking about me maybe doing some extra hours. I'm sorry, Eddie, the situation hasn't changed. Ah, now ah, well. Of course, it could be different once we start lambing. If it is, I'll let you know. Oh, thanks, David. Um, there is something, though. I was meaning to mention it. Oh, yeah? You know I've been spending a bit of time at Borchester Market just lately, with my NFU hat on. Yeah? Well, I know for a fact they're looking for livestock handlers. I was talking to the senior auctioneer. What? You reckon they might take me on? Yeah, why not? It's only on market days, of course. Well, that's all right. Part-time's what I'm looking for. Well, you'd be perfect, Eddie. Ex-farmer, been handling livestock all your life. That's me. So, do you want me to put in a word? There's a couple of little wing nuts at the back, Mum. If I loosen them, the headboard should just slide off. If we're lucky. Can we just pull the bed out a bit so I can get behind? OK, ready? Yep. Right. A bit more. That's enough? Yep, that should do it. Oh, you'll be glad of the space once the bed's down. Mm. When Annette moved in, I had to store all the stuff from here in my bedroom. The flat's not really big enough for two. Not enough storage space. Can you reach? I think so. Yep, 
Got it. Have you heard from Annette yet? No. Not even a phone call to say she got there? Nope. Oh, well. That's got it. Right, let's see if I can reach the other one. And you're going to stack the bed against the wall? Mm Mm-hmm. That's where it was before. Done it? Yep, both undone. And off comes the headboard. Ah, well done. Can you take it? Oh, thanks. Right. Now, if we tip it over... So you're putting your chest of drawers in here? Yeah, that's the plan. It's going against the end wall in the little alcove there. Do you think it'll fit? I know it will. Do you? I measured it a while ago. That's where the cot was going. OK, let's get the legs off, shall we? Hang on, Pip. Don't send him yet. OK. Just need to open up the pen. All right, that's got it. You can let him come. Go on. Off you go. That's it. And you too. Well done, Pip. Stand back, can you, Dad? Oh, sorry. You're putting them off. Oh. Go on, you lot. That's it. In you go, girls. And you awkward. And in you go. Great, thanks. No problem. Well, I know I've said it before, but you're a natural with livestock. Well, you've just got to think the way they do. Yeah. Let them take their time, not be too impatient. Yeah, I know. I'm always doing things in a rush. I ought to know by now. You should. Um, I've been meaning to ask you, Pip, are you OK to do some lambing shifts this year? Oh, I don't know. Evenings, if you can manage it. If I use Eddie, I have to pay him extra. Actually, well, it might be a bit difficult this year, what with everything. Then um, what's that supposed to mean? It's not supposed to mean anything. I've got college work for a start. Let's be honest, shall we, Pip? It's not about college work, is it? Yes, it is. We both know why you don't want to tie up your evenings. Here we go again. You can't leave it alone, can you? If you haven't got time to help me with lambing, you haven't got time to go out with him. He's got a name, you know. OK. Well, if you're saying that you're busy with college work, I expect to see you doing it. Hang on a minute, you're not my tutor. I do not expect you to be going out every night. You are so out of order here. It's me who decides what work I have to do, all right, not you. Yeah, maybe. There's no maybe about it, so don't use that as an excuse just because you can't cope with my relationships. OK, if you really haven't got time to help, I'll have to make other arrangements. I think you'd better. Eddie will be pleased with the extra work anyway. Well, there you are, then. Everyone's happy. Hi, you two. How are you getting on? All right. Got the sheet moved, thanks to me. That's good. So is that it? Can I go now? Yeah, of course you can. Thanks. Don't mention it. OK... What happened? I am doing my best, love. I really am. But it's not easy. Well, at least you're still talking to each other. I'd call that progress. Thanks, Mum. That's brilliant. Oh, we're not stopping, are we? Might as well. I can manage everything else on my own. All right, if you're sure. It's funny. Two weeks ago, I was thinking I'd have to take it all to a boot sale. There's no way I could have found space for it all when... Well, anyway, I've got room for it now. You said you'd decided where the cot was going. Yeah, right here. And up there, that's where the mobile was going, so it would catch the light from the window. Oh, yeah. I'd even decided on the colour scheme. Eggshell blue and yellow. Could have done the whole room with a tin of each. Oh, well, that's one expense saved. Helen, love. Plus, I've got the room back, and like you said, Annette's come through it stronger. So, one way and another, it's worked out pretty well. Yeah. Tell you what, why don't you put the kettle on? OK. And I'll pop downstairs and buy us a couple of Danish pastries. (sighs) Right then. Spill the beans. Have you managed to get in touch with your mate Noddy yet? I have, and he says he'll be happy to take the job. And what's the damage if he does? Well, he can't tell you that till he knows exactly what you want. I told him roughly, but he's got to see it written down first. Well, did you tell him I can't afford much? 
There's a bit left over from what we borrowed, but uh, it's going to be tight. Well, I told him that. He says you won't find anyone cheaper in Barsetshire, not who does a proper job. And since it's me, he has agreed to a little discount too. Right. Uh, and can he do ferrets? Oh, he can do anything you like. He copies from pictures off the internet. Right. The other thing is, how soon can he do it? Oh, as soon as you like. Get the van over there this afternoon. He'll start on it today. Oh, well, I'll have to drop a present off at our Williams first. It's his birthday. Well, the quicker you get it over to him, the quicker it'll get done. Uh, I'll have to have a lift back. Look, you're not free this afternoon, I suppose. Oh, I can't help you, I'm afraid. Me and Frieda are off to the garden centre. Mm, maybe William could run me back. He'll have the estate pick up. Well, you don't want to hang about. You're lucky catching Noddy when he ain't got much on. Eh? I thought you said he was good. Well, you won't find no one better. So how come he hasn't got a three-month backlog? Well, he usually does. It just so happens you've struck it lucky. Oh, yeah? Yeah, what with the recession and that. So he's struggling? No, not for long. He's got a fleet of ice cream vans to do. Oh. Well, no point in me hanging about, then. The van'll need doing sometime. Of course it will. Besides, I can't wait to see Clary's face when she sees the little surprise I've got lined up. Boy, what's that, then? This is between you and me, Right. I don't want it blabbed all around the village. Oh, you can trust me. I'm going to call it after her. What? My van. I'm calling it Clary. Oh, that's nice. She liked that. So her name's going over the bonnet. Well, the only problem is what to use for a picture. Why have a picture? What makes it more personal somehow. Oh, you reckon? I thought about getting him to copy a photo, but, well, you can't really get the detail, can you? Not on the front of a van. So, I came up with that. What is it? You can see what it is. Well, it's not meant to be Clary, is it? Not directly, no. What do you mean, not directly? Well, it's more representational, you could say. Clary ain't got a punk hairdo for a start. That's not hair. It's the sun's rays. Sunshine of my life, see? Oh, ah. Sort of a... Uh, what you call it? Metaphor. Blimey. Believe me, Bert. When I get out and about this summer, that's going to be the best-known face in Borsetshire. We found a marvellous place to take Peggy on Friday. A history of hats. Really? Hats through the ages. It's over at the manor house in Lower Pendon. Have you been there? Years ago. Isn't that the place with all the portraits? That's the one. I was having a look in the Echo for somewhere to go. You've heard about this little outing we're planning? Yeah, Brian mentioned it to David at the NFU last night. It's because Peggy's a bit low. That's right. It's not surprising, is it? No. And it's a lovely idea. Jenny thought, why didn't the three of us go out somewhere for the day? Chris, Peggy and me. Great. Hopefully it'll take her out of herself a bit. Well, sounds perfect. Doesn't it? Hats off, it's called. She'll love it. Oh, hello. Is Josh still here? Yeah, it's time he went, though. Ah, good. Need a quick word. See if he wants to do some shifts in the lambing shed this year. What's the hurry? Well, I'll be seeing Eddie later on. I don't want to offer him more shifts than I need to. Poor Eddie. He's desperate for the money. I know, love, but we've got to be realistic. I know. So what have you done with Phil? Oh, he's helping me with the calves. You waiting to get off? The idea was to go into town early and get him a new blazer. Oh, right. Well, I'll tell him. He won't be long. And I hope he's not getting himself too mucky. He's got his good trousers on. <laughs> Sorry, I must just have a word with Josh. Yeah, of course. See you in a minute. It doesn't seem possible it's lambing time again. I know. Where does the time go? It doesn't seem like five minutes since Phil was up here half the night. Yeah. Too drafty for him these days, out in that lambing chair. Of course it is. Mind you, he'd probably still do it if I let him. We should be all right. Even if Pip's been a bit of a prima donna this time. Isn't she so keen anymore? There's a new boyfriend on the scene. And to be honest, we're not particularly happy about it, David and I. What's wrong with him? His age. He's 28. Oh, my goodness. Suddenly, there's no time in her social calendar for helping on the farm anymore. And I don't suppose we've handled it particularly well. I don't see how you could, something like that. She seems to be off the lambing rotor for this year, at least. That's why we're hoping Josh will give us a few hours. Well, that's the trouble with farming these days. There's so few people to draw on at busy times. It can be a struggle. 
when I think what it was like in our day, you had all the staff and their families, and for the big things like lambing or haymaking, everyone seemed to be willing to help. It's a different world, I'm afraid. It certainly is. I expect we'll manage. We usually do. I'm sure you will. Anyway, tell me what Jennifer was saying about Peggy. Well, she's really quite worried. Oh, dear. Apparently, Peggy's not going out anywhere except the laurels. She's not really seeing anyone. And this could go on for a long time. Exactly. She's going to have to build a new life. And it won't be easy. Because Jack's still there. I can see why it's hard for her. But going out with us two, well... We've seen a lot together over the years. Definitely. So Jennifer thought she might say yes to an outing with us. And has she? Well, we haven't asked her yet. Phil and I are hoping to pop round there this afternoon on our way back from Borchester. I won't take no for an answer. (laughs) Great. We'll have lunch somewhere and take in this hat show. It should be good fun. You're not going to believe this, love. Doesn't he want to help either? Oh, he'll help, all right. But he's trying to negotiate a substantial rise in his pocket money in return. (laughs) Our Josh? Well, that's ridiculous. (laughs) Tell me, whatever happened to those nice, helpful kids that used to live here? She was just standing there, packed and ready to go. I'll be honest, it was a shock. You had no idea it was coming? Nope. Of course, I knew she had certain issues. What sort of issues? Oh, to do with relationships, mostly. You know, that sort of thing. Is that why she went? I don't think so. I think she just felt it was time to move on. You know what they're like at that age? A bit tough on you, though. Not talking it through, at least. <laughs> I don't mind. I'm, I'm glad for her. Yeah? She was in a real mess when she turned up in Ambridge. I'm just pleased she's got herself sorted out. <laughs> you are good. As long as she's happy. That's all that matters. Hi. Oh, hi, Patrick. I'm not buying today. I just wanted a quick word. How are you doing, Helen? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. So, if you haven't come into shop... I wondered what you were doing at lunchtime, Kirsty. Oh. You might not be interested, but I'm going over to Ambridge. I want to see if there are bitterns on Arkwright Lake. Yeah? The Wildlife Trust's been doing some maintenance work over there. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that. Cutting back the reed beds, uh, taking out some overhanging branches. Habitat improvement, they call it. Mm, good to see what they've done. I did a few hours myself. Back in the summer, I thought I must pop back next year and see if there's any bitterns. I thought maybe you'd like to join me, Kirsty. Uh, I don't know. Since you're interested. Oh, I'd, I'd love to, Well, but... if you're thinking about a long lunch break, it's fine with me. Are you sure? Positive. It's never that busy on a Wednesday. Well, in that case... Uh, you'll come? Yeah, thanks. Oh, great. Uh, don't worry about food. I'll bring some sandwiches or something. Oh, lovely. OK, I- I'll see you later then. Half twelve, all right? Uh, fine. Excellent. See you then. See you. Bye. Well, there's a surprise. Mm. It'd be nice for you to have a break. Mm, it will. And I've been meaning to see how the work's going at Arkwright Hall. With a bonus bitten, if you're lucky. I wonder if we'll ever get them on the new wetland system. It was the business-like way he came out with it that got me. I asked him if he was up for helping in the lambing shed this year and the first thing he says is how much. <laughs> no flies on our Josh. You can say that again. <laughs> so, I asked him how much he had in mind, thinking that I could dash him a couple of extra quid. But no. No way. Right, come, let's get this leg up. I suppose we should be glad, really. What? That our son's a mercenary little opportunist? <laughs> David? Well, he is. Well, you could say he was showing real business acumen. <laughs> Come on, this isn't Dragon's Den. It's a family <laughs> farm. <laughs> All right, you silly girl, I'm not going to hurt you. Well, be fair, he's seen the way we run things. We're business-minded ourselves. Well, of course we are, have to be. So how can we complain if he's picked it up? If he decides to make his future on the farm one day, we might be very glad he thinks like that. <laughs> Well, I feel sorry for the first rep who has to deal with him. They won't stand a chance. A <laughs> tough negotiator, eh? I'm not kidding. <laughs> I said to him, don't you think that's a bit steep? And do you know what his answer was? It's less than you're paying Eddie. Well, how does he know that? Because he's been on the DEFRA website <laughs> looking at the minimum rates for agricultural <laughs> workers. Really? Yeah. <laughs> said to him, Eddie's an adult with lots of experience. And what was his answer to that? Well, he said that he had experience too. And this is the best bit. 
He had smaller hands than Eddie, so he could do a better job. He said that? He did. <laughs> right, let's get this foot sorted out. Can you pass me the knife, love? He's going to go far, that boy. Yes, thanks. Did you hear Eddie got an interview at the market? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pleased for him. I hope they take him on. So, what did you agree in the end with Josh? I said that if he did a good job, he would notice a difference in his pocket money. So, he can take it or leave it. Mmm, this is scrummy. Mm. I have to confess, I, I didn't make them myself. <laughs> I sort of guessed that. They came from that new deli in Farmdale Street. Mm. Good choice, anyway. Mm. It's a great spot, isn't it? This place. Mm, fantastic. Is that how you discovered it? Working with the Wildlife Trust? Yep. Are you a member? Mm, afraid not. Shame on you. <laughs> Working in an organic shop and you don't belong to the local Wildlife Trust. Yeah, yeah. I ought to be drummed out of the place. Oh, uh, hang on a minute. Have you seen something? Uh, I'm not sure. A bitten? No, I, I don't think so. Mm, I don't reckon we're going to be that lucky. Here, you, you, have a, you have a quick scan. Mm, thanks. Um, what am I looking for? Good question. <laughs> uh, they're almost impossible to see in a reed bed. Um, brilliant camouflage. Right. So you're really looking for any movement in the reeds where they're standing? OK. Uh, can't see anything at all. Maybe we're a bit early anyway. I thought we might be. You know a lot, Patrick. How did you get into it? Uh, I've always noticed the birds since I was nine. Well, what started it? Um... Well, my, my dad took me up to Berrymore Nature Reserve. Do you know it? It's on the other side of Felpersham. Mm, I've heard of it. We saw these lapwings doing courtship dances. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> that was me hooked. Amazing, is it? Yeah, yeah, you, you've got to see it, really. The males come tumbling out of the sky, looking like it's totally out of control. Oh, wow. And sometimes you'll, you'll see them on the ground, rocking backwards and forwards. It's, it's making a sort of scrape on its territory. Oh, I'd love to see that. Well, if you want, we could go up to Berrymore when we get into the breeding season. Mm. But there's a lot fewer now than there were when I was nine. I'd really like to see them. OK, we will. Here, you have the bins back now. I can't see a thing. Hello, Helen. You on your own today? Oh, hi, Jill. Yeah, Kirsty's out at lunch. How are you? Fine. Now, I mustn't be long. I've left Phil trying on blazers in Underwoods. Oh. If I leave him too long, goodness knows what he'll end up with. <laughs> I came in for some of those lovely apricot flapjacks of yours. Right. How many would you like? I'd better have six, I think. OK. We're popping in to see Peggy this afternoon. Oh, give her my love. I will. And how are you getting on now you've got the flap to yourself again? Fine, thanks. I mean, well, it's odd. I quite liked having the company, you know. Of course you did. And it stayed with you some time, didn't she? Yeah, but it was only ever going to be temporary till she got herself sorted out. Well, I'm glad she had somewhere to go when she needed it. Yeah, so am I. And I must admit, it's nice to have the room back. A bit more space. <laughs> now, is there anything else? No, that's all, thanks. Right, well, that's 5.40 then, please. Mm. Thanks. Oh, hi, Jill. How are you? Fine, thanks, Kirsty. How are you? Good, thanks, Jill. Yeah, very good. And there's your change. Thank you. Right, I'd better pop back and see what Phil's up to. He's probably chosen something straight out of Noel Cameron. <laughs> Bye. 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 So, how did it go? Great. He's such a nice guy. Yeah, he seems it. And did you see any bittens? Or wasn't that the object? Of uh, course it was, <laughs> and no, we didn't. It's a shame. Bit of a waste of time, then? Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. No? So what would you say? I'd say I reckon I could get quite interested in birds. Oh, yeah? As a matter of fact, I'm thinking of making a study of the courtship dance of lapwings. <laughs> <laughs> that interested, eh? Anyway, thanks for the long lunch break. You're very welcome. Now I'll just go and hang up my coat and you can get off for yours. OK. Oh, it's great working here. You never know who you're going to meet next. No. Clara, are you ready yet? Nearly. Hurry it up, can you love? I don't want to turn up late for my interview. Yeah, it won't be a minute. Oh, what's the great rush? 
Don't take an hour to drive to Porchester. You see the traffic on Market Day? Ah, oh, isn't that bad? How would you know? You mean down the market for years? Well, he was talking to Devon Archer. He's always in it these days. And why do you think that is, eh? I'll tell you. He's getting so much stick from his NFU members about the congestion. Well, any road. You've got plenty of time. Oh, listen, by the time I've dropped off Clary over at the dairy... Oh, oh yeah. well then, while you're at it, maybe you ought to drop me off at the vicar's. Why do you want to go to the vicar's? Yeah, he wants a word about that retreat he's going on. What retreat? Well, you heard. He's camping out round the villages for Lent. Oh, that ain't a retreat. What is it, then? Publicity stunt. Oh, he reckons he's doing it for the refugees. Oh, so he might be. It's a publicity stunt all the same. Yeah, well, it don't matter what you call it. It's an opportunity for us, isn't it? How'd you work that out? Well, think about it, Eddie. He's looking for somewhere to put up his tent. We've got a field. Made the connection yet? <laughs> Why would we want the vicar camping in our field? Well, if he camps there, he's going to want things, isn't he? Grub, cups of tea... Maybe the old glass of cider. Oh, he don't drink during Lent. He's a spiritual man. Yeah, and another thing. If he camps over there for a few nights, it's what they call a precedent, isn't it? Precedent for what, Vicar's camp? Campsites. You can make a lot of money at a campsite. Nobody goes abroad for their holidays. Oh, it's moonshine, Dad. Oh, where's Clary got to? Oh, you know what, Clary? You're never going to make money until you show more initiative. I'll be making money if I get this job. That's if I ever get to the interview. Clary! Yeah, all right, all right. I'm there. Oh, at last. Eddie, you ain't going to an interview like that. Why not? Well, at least put a tie on. You look like you've spent the night with Bartleby. Oh, they're looking for a livestock handler, not a managing director. You could have made yourself a bit presentable. Oh, come on, let's go. Give us a chance to get me coat on. Well, hurry up, then. It's nice of Edward to lend you his car. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Um, When's the van going to be ready? Well, Noddy reckons he'll have it finished by tomorrow. Well, I hope you ain't having nothing embarrassing on there like last time. Only a ferret, that's all. A ferret, just the one. Just the one? On each side? Right, are we ready? Yeah, 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 hang on. I, I might as well come too. Where are you going, Joe? Oh, he's off to see the vicar. You ain't, are you, Joe? No, he changed my mind. Perhaps I'll have a couple of hours at the cattle market instead. Morning. Am I okay to come in? Oh, hi, Ian. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, cheers. Oh, I mean, this probably isn't a good time to pop round. If you're busy, I'll go away again. No, no, I'm all right for a bit. Was it anything in particular? Uh, well, no, no, not really. Just wondering how you're getting on. Now you're back on your own. Oh, right. Well, glad to have the place to yourself again. I've had a card from her. Oh, yeah? Mm. Came this morning. Just said that she got her grand's okay and that her grand was making a fuss of her. Well, there you are. She's going to be fine. <sighs> Helen? She was pregnant, you know. What? I really wanted her to have the baby, but she didn't. I told her I'd give her all the support I could, but in the end she got rid of it. I see. And that's when she decided to move out. Time to get on with a new life. Oh, poor Annette. I mean, it must have been tough for both of you. Yeah, it was. Well, you'll know what I mean. Uh, yeah. And when there's a baby involved... I know, I know how much it hurts. Yeah. Well, me and Mads. If, you know, if you find you've got strong feelings about it, it's, it's, it's very hard. I mean, even when it's like at a distance. I think I'm ready for a break. How about we go into the house and have some coffee? Who come he wants to do the interview in here? Who should I know? Maybe he wants it to be informal. Oh, seems a daft idea to me. You won't be able to hear yourself speak. He just said to get myself a cup of tea in here. And he'd be along when they finished selling the calves. Yeah, well, they finished them. Say so on the screen, look. Hmm? Oh, well, in that case, he'll be along any minute. Look, 
So, so why don't you go for a wander? Oh, I will in a minute. I thought that's what you came for, to have a look at the cattle. I came to support you, Eddie. Well, it's much appreciated, I'm sure, but it's time you had a walk. Ah, uh, well, maybe I'll have one of them all-day breakfasts first. Yeah, all right, you go and get one, then sit yourself somewhere else, will you? Mr Grundy, so sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> oh, no problem. <clears throat> Uh, this is my dad, Joe. Another Mr. Grundy. How do you do? Oh, great to meet you, Mr. Uh, uh, Bailey. Jonathan Bailey. Dad's just off, isn't you, Dad? Uh, so, uh, you're not looking for a job as well, Mr. Grundy? <laughs> Me? Oh, oh, no, no. I, I've had over 80 years chasing cattle about. I reckon that's enough for anybody. Absolutely. <laughs> Tenant, farmer, man and boy, I was. Just like any year. Until we hit up on our times. Didn't we, Eddie? We did. <laughs> now, why don't you go and get that breakfast? A very, very nice calf you run here, Mr Bailey. You're not bad, is it? Uh, anyway, Dad, I expect Mr Bailey wants to get on with the business. Ah, well, <laughs> I'll leave you to it, then. Uh, only, before I go, i just like you to know what a good man you'd be getting in my Eddie. He's a cattleman through and through. Yeah, all right. He understands them, you see, Mr. Bailey. He knows the way they think. Is that right? Well, you take that time when a bull got panicked at the county <laughs> show. It got itself in such a state <clears throat> nobody go near it. Except my head. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, well, they, they was going to shoot it. But Eddie here goes up to it, cool as you like. Whispers a few words in his ear, and off he goes, quiet as a lamb. Thank you, Dad. Now, look, here's a tenner. You go and get that breakfast. Oh, oh that's very civil of you, Eddie. Oh, oh, very much. Nice to meet you, Mr. Grundy. Yeah. Oh, and you, I'm sure. Yeah, well, before I go, I'd better tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> there was a reporter from the Echo at the show that day. Dad, he wanted to do a story about Eddie, the local hero, but Eddie... Nowhere to be found. He's scarpered. Modest, eh, Mr. Grant? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't believe it was Eddie Riven that quad bike made the bull go berserk in the first place. Uh, right. Thanks a lot, Dad. Oh, well, credit where it's due, Eddie. You was an hero that day. Only right Mr. Bailey here should know about it. Yeah, so when Mads started talking to me about father and a child, well... Was at the time, I couldn't think about anything else. <laughs> it was crazy. You don't mean it was a crazy idea? No, 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 no. I mean, I thought it was wonderful. I mean, it was getting to be the biggest thing in my life. You know, looking back, I can see why Adam got so upset. Yeah. It must have been hard for him. Yeah, it was. I mean, it could have broken us up. Really? Oh, yeah. And did Mads ever have a baby? No idea. It's odd. You get someone like Annette just walking away from it. Whereas for you, it became well, everything. Yeah. So much so that you'd risk your whole relationship. You know, I sometimes wonder if I would have gone on with it, even at the risk of losing Adam. I, mean, I still can't answer for sure. Yeah. Everything could have been so different. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. Me and Adam are rock solid. I mean, in the end, it's all worked out for the best. I'm sure of that. But if Mads hadn't changed her mind, well, who knows? Yeah, I guess you'll never know. Well, I mean, there's one thing I am sure about. I don't want it now. Oh, you can't say that, surely. Yeah, I can. Once I had time to think about it properly, well, just the thought of losing Adam, nothing would be worth that to me. Mm. But I know I would have been a good dad. Of course you would. I can see why it meant so much. Yeah. But I was wrong. Kids aren't for Adam and me. Never could be. That's the reality. Oh, Eddie, is that you? Hello, Clary. Thank you, Clary, love. How'd you get on? Don't ask. Oh, love. Daddy insisted on telling him about the bull I annoyed at the county show. What? That was ages ago. Oh, he made it sound like I couldn't handle livestock. How could you, Joe? Oh, it wasn't my fault, Perry. I was trying to say the opposite. 
Oh yeah, by making me look an idiot. Well, I told him it was Eddie who got the beast under control when nobody else would go near him. Look, do me a favour, will you, Dad? In future, just try engaging your brain first. I was doing my best. Hang on a minute, Joe. What was you doing in the interview in the first place? Well, I couldn't help it, Chloe. There he was in the market calf having a cup of tea and along comes Mr Big Shot Bailey and starts doing the interview. He wanted to keep it informal. So naturally I had to speak up for Eddie. What else could I do? Oh, you meant well, I suppose. Oh, I did, sorry. Oh, we ain't no worse off than we was. I'll put the sausages on. Uh, good ones, are they, Clary? Well, the usual. I don't usually get no complaints. Ah, oh, very nice, love. They'll be perfect for a celebration. Hey, uh, Dad, uh, get a flagon of cider out, will you? <laughs> right you are. And not the rubbish stuff either. We'll have the ball set sheer beauty, ah. an auspicious occasion like this. What are you saying, Eddie? I got the job. <gasps> he said I was the ideal candidate with the experience I've had. This <laughs> is true, Dad. Oh, it is very love. <laughs> we wish for it, you know. <laughs> Eddie, I've got a good one to smack you in the head with a frying pan. Oh, don't do that, love. Oh, no, no, you might knock out what few brains he's got. Hey. <laughs> You're both as bad as each other, how could you? It's great, though, ain't it, love? Two days a week starting next Tuesday. And, depending on trade, I could be making not far short of a hundred quid a day. Two hundred pound a week? Oh, Eddie! Well, if I get a few tips from the sellers, I'll easily make that. Uh, are you going to have a glass, well, Terry? Well, go on then, seeing as we're celebrating. <laughs> oh, I've got to do a short course when I start about animal welfare and oh, that. Oh, yeah, it's fair enough, that is. After oh. that, it'll be out on the job. <laughs> well... Done, darling. I might even forgive you for pulling my leg like that. <laughs> well, the best thing is, I'll be making contacts. There'll be all sorts of other work coming from it. Just you wait. Ah, uh, we got a lot to thank the good Lord for. Uh, there you go, Clary. Oh, ciao, Joe. Uh, Eddie. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> right then. Here's to us Grundies. Ah. Let's hope there's good times ahead for all of us. Ah, hey. Cheers. Cheers. The worst thing's knowing that it has to be someone from the village. Surely not. Think about it, Chris. The bus shelter. All right, that could have been someone passing through. And the public toilets, maybe, but not the cricket pavilion. You don't think so? No, it's not credible. Someone must have gone up there deliberately to deface it. Oh, whatever goes on in their heads. Goodness knows. They'd obviously gone to some trouble to avoid being seen. Really? Well, they've only touched the back. Where it overlooks the hedge. So who found it? Neil. He was up there looking at the pitch and he decided to check on the state of the roller ready for the new season. I see. So he went round the back and there it all was. The same funny lettering as the others in the village, apparently, and not very artistic, according to Neil. Oh, so we haven't got a budding... What's his name in the village? Banksy. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Sorry to keep you... Nearly ready. That's all right, Peggy. I'll just feed the cats. <laughs> Is this a late breakfast for them or an early lunch? <laughs> I know you think I overindulge them. <laughs> of course not. Perish the thought. You've got to go a long time, poor dears. You can't be back till tea time, I don't suppose. Probably not. There you are, then. We were just saying, there's some more graffiti appeared in the village. Oh, dear. Where this time? The back of the cricket pavilion. Oh, no. Neil, does Sid Kimmins. know about it? He does, and he's hopping mad. Neil told him. Oh, I bet he is. Oh, there you he's are. demanding on, that then. the parish council do something. Has he been on to you yet? No, not yet. He will be, you can be sure of that. I don't know what the parish council can do. Nor do I. It's up to all of us to keep our eyes open. Exactly. And don't be impatient, you two. David said they were interviewing for your replacement today. That's right. Who's standing for it? Oh, just the two of them, Jim and Nathan. Oh, just look at them. Greedy boys. <laughs> <laughs> Is that everything then, Peggy? Yes, that's it. I'll just get my coat and we can be off. Nice to see you, Vicar. Uh, sit yourself down. Oh, thanks, Joe. Can I make you a cup of coffee? A kettle's boiled. Oh, oh fine, thank you. Uh, nice of you to pop round. Oh, <laughs> not at all. You uh, you said in your message you were keen to support my little... Uh, Gimel? Uh, gesture. Ah, yes, gesture. Of solidarity with refugees. Very commendable, I'm sure. Oh, thank you. 
I'm so thrilled you want to support me. Oh, well, we all got to do our bit, haven't we? Good cause like that. <laughs> now, the first thing I need to ask is, have you got a tent, Joel? Are you big I'm going to need a tent. I mean, I can't really see a shed. I know. Well, I, I wouldn't really think... Oh, I'm big... pretty sure I can borrow one. L leave it with me. I'll ask around the parish. No, 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 no. You misunderstand me, Vicar. I, <laughs> I, I shan't be camping out myself. Really? That's a pity. <laughs> yeah, well, well, as you well know, man of my years, it'd be ridiculous. Yeah, it? indeed. Who should draw the line at someone a good deal younger than me? Uh, I, I was thinking of myself more in a support role, like, if it gets my meaning. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, food and refreshment, cups of tea, wood for your fire and that. And you'd be prepared to do that for me, Joe? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm touched, I really am. So, 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 so when I'm camped on the village green next week, you'll be coming down with hot soup? And... Uh, oh, no, no, not the village green. Oh? Uh, we were thinking, uh, Eddie and me, you might like to camp in our field. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, well, it makes sense if you think about it. You have all your facilities on hand, your food, your firewood and that. Right. And if the weather turns nasty, you can put up your tent inside the pole barn. What do you think of that? Well, I don't quite know what to say. <laughs> he knew you'd like the idea. Any sign of Eddie? Oh, hello, Alan. Hello, Clary. I didn't hear you arrive. Has Joe offered you a cup of coffee? I have, Clary. So I should have. Uh, Joe has kindly offered me the use of his field. He's what? For my Lent project. Well, don't be daft, Joe. The vicar don't want to camp all the way out there. Who's going to see him? Ah, uh, no, you're right, Clary. Sorry, Joe, m much as I like the idea, I do need to be visible to the community. Well, of course you do. Whatever was you thinking of, Joe? Just trying to help, that's all. Sorry, Alan, but I'm going to have to love you and leave you. Of course. But if Eddie ever gets here with the van, he's been having it painted. Ah. Uh -huh. He said he'd be here by now, and he's supposed to be at Bridge Farm by 11. So you won't be wanting our facilities then, Vicar? Uh, not this time, I'm afraid. Uh. Of course he don't, Joe. It's to remind people, isn't it, Alan, about refugees and that. Well, that was the idea, yeah. I'll tell you what, though, Joe. Oh, what's that? Since you're so keen to support me, why don't I leave you one of my sponsorship forms? Yeah, right you are. Oh, here's Eddie now. Oh, that's good. Van's looking quite nice, I'm glad to say. My goodness, look at this one. Now that's what I call a hat. Sunday, best circa 1959. Imagine turning up at the village fete in that. Oh, yes. That's where Phil first noticed you, isn't it, Jill? Mm. What year was that? Must have been around that time. Goodness, you're going back now, Peggy. It was the year he filmed it all on his cine camera. The fete, I mean. 1957. Oh, he ran a cinema tent, too. And wasn't that the year Humphrey Littleton opened the fete? It oh, was. yes. I was working in Borchester. It was sheer luck I was there at all. It was scorching hot, do you remember? Mm, that's right. I took all the children. He filmed them too. It was Lillian's birthday. Oh. Is it? I remember seeing the film. Lillian didn't want to go. She looked really sulky. <laughs> so she'd have been, what, ten? Hard to imagine now. This hat would have been just the thing on a day like that. Perfect for the sun. <laughs> I'll say, you could hold a picnic party in the shade <laughs> under that. Hey, <laughs> look, girls. You can actually try them on in there. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, come on. We are going to do some dressing up. Oh, goodness. Oh, there you are, Peggy. Try that one. Are you sure we're allowed to? Yes, look at them over there. Well, <laughs> all right. They're only copies, Peggy. I don't think they're the genuine article. Oh, yes, very chic. There's a mirror here. Oh, it's quite sweet, isn't it? It's gorgeous. I had something rather like this. Do you remember, Jill? Yes, so you did. It became a real favourite for church in the end. <laughs> oh, this is definitely me. Straight out of Pride and Prejudice, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Oh, Mr Bennett. Very good. <laughs> Come on, Jill. You're not properly dressed. Put this one on at once. Oh, all right, if you insist. <laughs> oh, yes, Jill. Oh, you could almost pass for a scullery maid. A rather ancient one. <laughs> very pretty, isn't it? Considering it was only for below stairs. It's charming. Reminds me of Lower Loxley at Christmas. <laughs> yes. There's definitely something about hats. Don't you think they added something to life? I'm sure they did. Come on, you two. Get closer together. Oh, no, it's well, time we've for all a to be in it. Absolutely. Hang on, then. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Yes? Would you be very kind and take a photo of us, please? Oh, no problem. Thanks. <laughs> uh, all you've got to do is press that one. All yes, right? Right, yes. Come on, then, girls. Right. All together now. <laughs> Let's have a big, cheesy smile. Oh, 
Yes, that looks quite nice, Eddie. Ah, that's all right, isn't it? <laughs> well, don't sound so surprised. I said it would be, didn't I? Well, can you wonder after the last time them pigs? <laughs> oh, yeah, they were certainly eye catching. That's one way of putting it. Damn right embarrassing, if you ask me. Oh, they weren't, Clary. Oh, yes, they were. I didn't know where to put myself sometimes when you dropped me off in town. It's marketing, love. No one forgot the name Grundy once they'd seen that van. That's true. Probably cost you a lot of work. Who'd want that parked outside their house? Well, it's a very nice ferret, Eddie. It ain't going to offend nobody. Quick as a ferret. Yeah, quite catchy, I suppose. Got a certain ring to it, I thought. Anyway, I've got to get over Bridge Farm, so if you're ready, Eddie... Uh, just have a look at the front first, love. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd better be on my way, too. Yeah, right, you are, Vicar. Thanks for calling round. Uh, no problem. Uh, uh, don't forget the sponsorship form, John. Yeah, uh, no, no. Mm. Oh! Oh, no! Like it, love? Eddie Grundy, what have you done this time? My goodness, this place has changed. Hasn't it just? It used to have a terrible reputation. Very rough. It was. Now look at it. It's lovely. Let's hope the food's improved too. All you used to be able to get was crisps and pickled eggs. Those were the days. (laughs) Paul and I used to come over this way to walk by the river. It's absolutely beautiful. Or it used to be. It still is. I've got a picture of him on the riverbank. Goodness knows how many years ago that was. Yes, the exhibition brought it all back. You forget how many men wore hats in those days. Oh, they all did. I remember the first time I saw Dan. He was in his trilby, and that was for working on the farm. Of course. What about the flat caps? (laughs) Simon Cooper always had a flat cap. So he did. And Uncle Walter, of course. Oh, yes. Dear old Walter. (laughs) Jill? Uh, Phil once promised to mend a hat for me. What? You remember that one I wore to David and Ruth's wedding? I do. It was wonderful. Who could forget it? Well, Phil sat on it. Oh. I was furious. But he insisted he could mend it. That was brave of him. Except he never got round to it. It turned up years later in the back of a cupboard looking rather <laughs> limp and sad. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Which is exactly what's going to happen to a pair of my shoes. Phil's assured me I don't need to take them to the cobblers. Never mind. He means well. He does. Oh, look, here comes the waiter. We haven't even looked at the menu yet. I don't care what you've got planned for this afternoon. As soon as you drop me off, you can go right back and get that picture painted out. How many more times, Clary? It's not meant to be you. Never mind what it's meant to be. It's a smiley sun. That's why it's got a round face. A smiley sun that just happens to have my name over the top. Yeah, that doesn't make it a picture of you. Listen, Eddie. Your ketchup bottle says tomato on the label. And what's that red thing just below it? It's not a plum, is it? Oh, that's different. The front of this van says Clary in great big letters. Yeah, I thought you'd be pleased. Pleased? I was calling the van after you. With a picture that makes me look fat and stupid. Oh, Clary. And what about my yeah. hair? It looks awful. It's not hair. It's the sun's rays. Oh, I'm not a fool, Eddie. I know that, look. Stop treating me like one. I'm not. I, I wouldn't do that to you. I mean it, Eddie. You get that picture painted oh. out and quick. Otherwise, you and me is going to fall out big time. Here we are. Come in. Thank you. Oh, what a lovely day we've had. Phil's got his music on. What's the betting he's having a nap? Oh, lovely and warm. Put the kettle on, can you, Chris? Right. Oh, yes. A cup of tea would be lovely. I'll just see if Phil would like a cup. There you are. You've already had a cup of ice, see, Phil. Phil? Oh. Jill? Oh, no. 